Well, I recently interviewed Eddie Curry. Yeah. Which was uh, a great interview. Thank you. Thank you. It was probably one of the most poignant uh, athlete interviews I've ever done in terms of really the ups and downs and the trauma and the tragedy uh, from, you know, this guy's having his daughter and his daughter's mother murdered uh, to being sued by his driver with gay allegations to a home invasion where him and his wife and his friends got tied up and everything else like that. Um, you know, but the, the one thing that seemed to go viral from that interview was when he was playing for the Bulls, he had a, a heart condition. Yeah. Do you remember this part of the interview? So essentially, the Bulls were worried that based on his condition that he might actually have a heart attack and die on the court, which I guess it happened to some other players yeah. around Gathers. that time. Hank Gathers. Right. Uh, Reggie Lewis. Right. Mm -hmm. So they wanted him to take this DNA test to see whether he had it or not. And they finally got down to a deal where they said, whether you pass or fail the test, we'll guarantee you 400,000 a year for 50 years to take this test, $20 million. And after meeting with his agent, the agent kind of explained that if you take this test, it's gonna create a norm for a lot of other players, especially black players. I actually looked it up. They mm. offered you 400,000 per year for right. 50 years right. if you took the test and failed it. Yeah, but the thing was, the crazy thing was like my agent had did the math because he like he's a super, like he was a lawyer before all of this, Leon Rose. He was a crazy super lawyer before all of this, but like, they did the math on it. The Bulls owed me like, uh, I don't know what it was for that next year. I had an option that year to get like 5.7 or 8 point whatever. Whatever it was, they basically were going to put that money up and pay me interest off that money. That's all they, they were really doing. And I kind of felt like at the time, I'm like, man, I don't, that don't, that don't really sit well with me. I felt like that wasn't really honest of them to do that. And so they it, it got to a point where they were like, you know what, well, we're not going to play you the rest of the, uh, the rest of the year. And... I'm sure you're going to pick your player option up next year, but we won't play you next year either. And then you can sit out next year also and basically try to figure out if you're going to play again. Um, so at that point, they were like, well, if you want, you can try to go out there and find a, 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 a trade scenario, a sign and trade scenario. And uh, if we like to sign a trade, then we'll we'll accept it. And that's what ended up happening. I have it. Heart murmur. Uh -huh. uh, right. Uh, certain uh, hole in your heart. Um, yeah. But like Big Sean spoke about, I just need mag. You can help it by taking magnesium and mm. and phosphates, phos, uh, potassium, a couple other things that help your heart. Uh, right. So got, I mean, he ultimately did not take the test. Good. He actually turned them down, and he made more than twenty million during the course of his career. So it actually kind of worked out. But it was a very interesting time. I mean, to say like, yo. 400,000 a year for the next 50 years. And he was probably like, what, I think 22 or something at the time. So essentially, most of the rest of his life. Right. He'll Sounds be like a good deal, but really not. Right? So, really not, right. Because th that money was already put aside for right. him and they would have just made interest off it and yeah. really it would have been almost free for them. For them. They yeah. would have been giving them 4% of the 10% they were making. Exactly. Their insurance exactly. Right. They were making money by him not playing. Yeah. And they were setting a precedent. Remember, mm -hmm. I told you, this is a doggy dog world. I don't mean to use those terms. Like me being with Peter, I got to think of something else. <laughs> this is uh, this is colonizer eats colonizer. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the the way to put it, but it is a business, and they're not in it for entertainment for themselves. They're putting forth entertainment so they can make money, and like these guys say, "Man, my team, my team." and you should stay with your team, and you should do this, and you should build a dynasty. You're, you're literally a pawn. So I say this all the time, and I didn't like when, when the scout from Detroit said it to me. And I said, you know, I didn't say a lot. I was a rookie, and I said, hey, where you been, man? He said, looking for your replacement. And he was honest, right? He has to, con and when a guy, they don't scout, scout everybody for your replacement. So guys need to realize that. Now, not only do you need to play well, and winning helps, and winning usually 
you know, Chuck Daly would say, um, uh, it banishes, winning banishes uh, um, mistakes. You don't see it. You don't pay attention to it. You, you, you go, okay, we're winning, so don't pay attention. But it got to be more than winning. Look, there's guys who were winning, and I say this, like Matt Bonds and these other guys who were on uh, McGee, all these guys on Golden State, when the season was over, when they got there, you know, when the season was over, hey, guys, thank you anyway, but we're, we have no more real estate for you. And you're sitting around totally dedicated, wearing 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 their, their colors and the, your number, you're going to be replaced. So you just have to, it's another reason you shouldn't pay attention to the media. I, I thank my guy, Bonnie Davis. Uh, he's recovering from cancer right now. One of my first coaches um, taught me fundamentals. Um, well, he, he kept pushing me to learn the fundamentals. Great guy. He literally, my high school year, told me to stop reading the paper, my senior year. Mm. He came into school, you know, I'm there like nine o'clock in the morning, I got the paper and I'm just right back to the Daily News to see if they say anything about me. And he said, come here, yeah, stop reading the paper. He said, don't do it. They're talking about what you already know. Don't read the paper. And, you know, I'm a reader. I read everything. I just won't read the sports section. 